Assalamu alaikum. Just uh, we missed out on a few points because obviously there's a lot of things to go. But uh, I'm just going to recap on some of the things what we missed out. So I'll correct me if I'm wrong or if I missed anything else out as well, please. Okay. First of all, when you arrive at the airport at Jidda or Medina, they will give you a wristband. If they don't give you a wristband, then sometimes in the last few years, they, they used to take photographs of you and they used to make ID cards as well, lanyard cards. So one or the other, keep it with you 24-7. Wherever you go in Makkah, Medina, Jidda, five days of Hajj. This is why we mentioned in the first program to take extra two photographs just in case they do decide to make ID cards, the lanyards, yeah? And you keep that with you at all times, your visas and everything. Now, the second thing we missed out on is the uh, Mollim numbers, they will give maybe they will give you Mollim numbers possibly. Normally, the last time I did Hajj, it was number 26 I was at. Okay, now if you go to the Hearst terminal, I don't know whether they will take you to Hearst terminal, but last year they took them to international terminal. There's three terminals at Jidda airport. One is international terminal, one is Hearst terminal. If you go to Hearst terminal, then please, please be very careful. It's absolutely massive. Yes, and there's chances are you're going to get lost. And also make sure your family and the people who are with you, they are with you at all times. If you need to go toilet, especially at the Hearst Terminal, what they've got is they've got a line A to line K. And they've got loads of pillars in line A, maybe possibly from 1 to 20. Yes. And I can remember I, we were stood at G12 pillar, the pillar number G12. So wherever your people are standing, because the guide from the airport will say, can you please wait here? Your saman will be on the trailer there with you at all times. So if you need to go toilet or if you need to go to eat, how to uh, eat something while they organize the coach, then make sure you take a note, you, you don't note of the pillar number at the Hearst terminal. Or even if you're at the international airport, you make sure where your group or your, where your families are sitting, which area. So you make sure of that so you don't get lost. Because otherwise you'll be looking for them forever. Okay. The other thing is, uh, we all mentioned last time that make sure you take copies of meningitis certificate, your ticket. Ticket is only one copy, but take two or three, three copies of your meningitis certificate, your passport copies and everything. Keep, if they don't take the passport, because last year they did not take the passports. So keep it safe in your suitcase and lock it up. And also, we, I personally believe in taking cash rather than cards. Because in the five days of Hajj, when you go in five days of Hajj, you will need cash because the small people who will be selling food and drinks and things like that, they won't have the card machine to take the payment off you. And each person, when you go in for five days, of make sure you give them at least 500 yards each. One elderly person got lost for three, four days. He didn't have a telephone number, he didn't have no money, and people fed him for three, four days, and he, he was found afterwards. So every ladies, gentlemen, please make sure you have from here, Alhamdulillah, it's a very good take extra mobile phone. So if you get lost each other, you can switch your mobile phones on and you can contact each other. Now, uh, Alhamdulillah, we you know we put our we put on our ihram, we went to Makkah, we went to a hotel, and then once we, we made the niyat of the ihram, we prayed Labbaik as much as possible. What we missed out yesterday is when you enter Makkah in Kabatullah. Then as soon as you see Betullah Sarif, you stop praying Labbaik. And you make dua from wherever you stood or go in a nice place. Yeah. And then wherever there's no rush, go there. And then what you look, wait, watch and observe, as I mentioned, and slowly look out for the green light. As Molana showed it on the screen yesterday, the green light has you have this is where you have to start your dua from in front of Hazre Aswat. Remember the three eyes, Istilam, intention. And no, sorry, istiba, intention, and istilam. And then you start your tawaf. We did our seven circuits yesterday, and you finish the eighth circuit as well, the eighth istilam. Make sure you cross Hazre Aswat. Now, what we, uh, after this, you pray your two rakat salah. If it's time, but as Molana mentioned yesterday, if it's as, after Asr time or after Fajr time, then we pray after Ishraq, after Fajr, the two rakat. But you can go and do your Safa Marwa Sahih. If it's after Asr, you've done your Tawaf, you can still go and do your Safa Marwa Sahi. And after Maghrib, wherever you are, right, you can pray your Salah as well at Maghrib time and then pray your Turaqat, Wajib Namaz, for 
tawaf, uh, umrah's tawaf. Now, every nafil tawaf you will do afterwards, you still have to pray the two wajib namaz after every tawaf. Now, there are 15 places in Makkah, 15 places in Makkah where your duas are accepted. Yeah, in front of Hazri Aswad, Hatim, Mizabe Rehmat, uh, Multazam, the door of Kaaba, Zamzam, Makame Ibrahim, yeah, Hatim, Rukme Yamani, Rukme Sami. So all these places, uh, Safa, Marwa. Then when you go in Arafat, Musdalfa, or Satan ko tino din country martivak, Allah Taala dua kabul karte hain. Musdalfa, Mina, Arafat, all these places, ye sari jagahe jo hai, wo duaye karne ke liye hai. So everybody, all the hajis that who's been accepted for your visas, you start making duas now, and those who's applied for it, you start making duas. Ya Allah, please accept our hajj and accept our duas and make it easy for us. So Allah sab ke liye asani farmaya hai, jin logon ko visa nahi mili hai, Allah unko bhi jaldi se jaldi visa inshallah milwa de. Right. The other thing is, you're going to get lost inside the haram. So what you do before you start your tawaf, you tell your ladies where to meet after you have finished your tawaf, either near a green light or you choose a place where you're going to meet. And also, Safa and Marwa, when you finish your Safa Marwa, then you tell your wife where to meet because sometimes you might even get lost at Safa Marwa as well. Now, Alhamdulillah, we finished the tawaf yesterday. Then from here, we go to Zamzam, have plenty of Zamzam. You normally I wash my face, my hair, I put you know uh, Zamzam on my chest as well, but not on my private parts. Okay. And then what you can do, honestly, you will feel really, you know, nice and cool and peace of mind once you put on Zamzam, pl drink plenty of Zamzam as well. Inshallah, from there, you will go to Safa and Marwa. Do you want to take over from Safa Marwa? Okay. Now, Make sure you've got your ladies with you. If you haven't got your lady, if you've got three or four ladies with you, those ladies who's been four, that's fine as the ladies. Now, at Safa and Marwa, again, wait, watch, and observe. Don't start your Safa Marwa Sai. Because if there's too many people and if it's too much crowd and they're walking right next to each other, yes, once me and my wife, we got really squashed and my chest was bouncing like a football. And I was lifted about six inches above the floor. So straight away, we come out. We were only like, we did only about 10, 15 meters. We come out, we went on the first floor. There's also escalators and lifts there as well. If, we, if the first floor is busy, you go on to the second floor. Like I said, wait, watch, and observe. This is very, very important, brothers. Wherever there is a crowd, you don't jump in. Yes, and many times you'll see crowd in, in Haram Sarif or in Mina as well. People will run everywhere. If anything happens, you don't run. You find the nearest pillar or nearest wall and just stand against it. Once we were in, in, in Haram Sarif in Makkah, and a lot of people started running. So I just stood up and I said, what's happened? He says, oh, one of the air fans dropped. That's why everybody's running. Now, if you start running with the people, if you fall, then people will run on top of you and you'll get stampeded and you'll get injured. Or sometimes I have seen people uh, when the, in the olden days when they used to have one bridge for set, pelting the setan, I have seen people died there, people have stumped on them, and I've seen bodies there. Not one, I've seen quite a few bodies. So you got to use your common sense, brothers. Now, inshallah, we will start our Safa Marwa Sahih. Again, on the Safa Marwa Sahih, you don't need to do istiba if you're not comfortable, okay? You only do it during the tawaf. You prayed your two rakat salah, you've been to Zamzam. Now, as Maulana said yesterday on the screen, you go to Masa. On Masa, from there, anybody will tell you there's a ramp there and then go on the ramp and you start your say from Safa. Now, let's say Safa is on my right hand side here from this wall. So we start from one side here and go to the end. So Safa is here. You will be able to see Metullah Sarif from one corner where Safa is. And then you make your dua, make your intention. Ya Allah, I'm performing Safa Marwa Sahih for Umrah. Please accept it for me and make it easy for me. And then... You make your dua, what you want to do, how long you want to do, and then you start your Safa Marwa. The ladies will not run in, in, in the Tawaf. They will not do Ramal, as Maulana explained, or they will not run in Safa Marwa. Only the men will run in Safa Marwa and do Ramal in the Tawaf. Now, there is a green light on the ceiling when in Safa Marwa. So what you do from the start of the green light to the end of the green light, only men will run. 
but not don't run like you're running in a race yeah just if there's too many people just pretend as though you are just running and pray the fourth kalima or what if you don't know the fourth kalima you pray whatever you want now from one safa to marwa that is one circuit some people used to do go from safa they used to go marwa and then come back to safa and they used to count it as one circuit which is 14 runs yeah and one elderly person from india he used to do 14 runs and he said oh i'm tired now i can't do any more uh, umrahs so he said how do you do your safa marwa sahi he says i counted from safa to marwa and marwa to safa is one but no brothers remember this from safa to marwa is your one circuit from safa to marwa is your one circuit and when he's when you're coming back from uh, marwa to safa that's your second surface circuit so you will finish your seventh circuit at the end of marwa okay remember now when you're doing your tawaf and when you're doing your safa marwa sahi don't just keep on looking everywhere look on the floor as well because you might see somebody's leave themselves or you might see blood on the floor i have seen it personally myself okay so you just look out on the floor when you're doing when you're doing your ordinary tawaf be careful you don't take too much money as well because from bolton a lot of people have lost their money as well pickpockets and everything when you sat in mecca or medina if you put your money here on the side you know and then you sat down one brother from bolton he's lost i think 800 pounds right and one chacha who's downstairs he still not had his suitcase back and somebody took his money out as well ismail kakas downstairs anyway so we, when we finish our marwa when we finish our umrah then we have to go for halak the man who Rasulullah Sallallahu has given three duas. A person who will shave his hair completely with ustura, then Rasulullah Sallallahu has given him three duas. A person who will only shave a quarter of his hair, then there is only one dua. And we say that we are Islam for the sake of knowing. And if you don't have to give it to the hair, then how will you give it So try and do, shave your hair completely. For the ladies, it's very, very important. What you do, one brother from here, a young brother, it just means wait as well. Kapas me one tasbih, there's one there. One brother from here, young brother went from here. Yeah. One brother went from here. He didn't know how to cut his wife's hair. And when they come back, she had shoulder hair, hair length. Yeah. So, you know, she, she, he didn't know how to cut it. So be careful. All you do, you grab hold of all the hair, all the way down. And then only one and a half fingers of yours, like this. That's it. This is all you cut. So if you don't like two or three umrahs, yes, then at least, you know, she's cut maybe two, five, six inches. But don't go all the way up to the top. So you have to learn all these things. Now, those ladies who are in the monthly cycle, they will actually stay at the hotel until they are parked off. They will do the ghusl. And what the husband or their mahram will do is go to put on your ihram in the hotel and go to masjid Aisha in the taxi. Or you can see 12 seater minibuses, they will be shouting, Masjid Aisha, Masjid Aisha. You go there. But if you go in after Fajr, have your breakfast and go half an hour before Israq time. Yes. Don't go early because we made a mistake. We went straight after Fajr. Yeah. And we had to wait some like one and a half, two hours. We had one piece of ihram on. And it, because the AC was on, it was in the cold time. We were freezing inside. So we had to wait until the Israq time was done. So have your breakfast. Put on your ihram and then make your wudu or you can do wudu, toilet, shower there as well. But best thing is prepare yourself from the hotel. Take some money with you in your money belt, everything ready to do your umrah. Do your niyat for uh, umrah zehram at masjid Aisha. Come back to your hotel, collect your ladies or your wife, whoever your uh, with your mahram is, and then take them with you. So the main folk will be doing the second umrah and the ladies will be doing there, finish their Umrah. Does everybody understand or am I going too fast, Molana? Eh? Okay, right. So, we, we, G. Yes. No, no, no. Because, no, the women, she's already in, she's, she's, she's already in Umrah Zehram. She's already made her intention. She's not done her Umrah yet. So she's already done the need from here or from the airport, wherever she is. Okay. Now, same thing will happen from the ladies who are coming from Medina. Any ladies who are in Medina Sharif, please remember these ladies. If you are in your monthly cycle in Medina Sharif, 
You cannot go to Masjid al Nabi, but you can do your salat to salam from outside the gate of Masjid uh, of Jannatul Baqi. You will see the uh, Gummat, Rasulullah Pak Salah from Gummat easily from there, and you can give your salam from the outside gate of Jannatul Baqi from there. You can go anytime. Those ladies who are not in the monthly cycle, you can ask the workers or any staff in Madinah Sharif what time to go. I'm trying to take Marana, all the three groups together to Makkah. Yeah? Okay. And then from there, those ladies who are in the monthly cycle coming back from Medina, they can still do their niyat for Umrah either in the hotel or they can do it outside in Masjid uh, Bire Ali, which is called Zul Hulefa. There's Wudu Khana outside and in the outside passage, you know, it's facing towards Qibla. You do your ladies will do the Wudu and then sit down and make intention for Umrah as we saw. Now, Labbek is a must for every Haji who's doing Umrah. For Hajj or Umrah, they have to pray Labbek three times after they made the intention of Umrah. So we, we're all now coming from back from Medina before I, Hajj or after Hajj, whichever you choose to do so. And then, inshallah, we will finish our Umrah coming back from Medina as well. Again, when we finish our Umrah, that is Hajj Tamattu. At Hajj time, at Hajj time, we will be putting on uh, our Ihram and making the niyat for Hajj instead of Umrah. Instead of Umrah. Before we said, I'm making intention for Umrah. This time we'll say, Ya Allah, I'm making intention to perform my Hajj. Please make it easy for me and accept it for me. Morana, you want to take over? Eh? Umrah finished. Yeah. 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 This is a question if you've all been concentrating for the past two, three days. Of all of the brothers here, which one of you won't be doing a halak after this umrah? There'll be a group of you who won't be doing the halak. So after you've done your sa'i, you won't be shaving your hair. Which one of you will be doing that? Not the women, no. Just want to see who's been concentrating. Huh? MashaAllah. Exactly. So those of you who will be doing Kiran won't be shaving your hair. You'll be leaving it as it is and you'll be extending for Hajj, inshallah. So yeah, mashallah is good. So concentrate. It's very important that you make your niyat as to which Hajj you wish to be doing. Tamatu is majority. Kiran will be those who are going to be restricted for time. And Ifrad is for people like us, I suppose, Mufti Sabia. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so remember your niyat is very very important I'll go back to this again we spoke about it yesterday we've done all of the umrah any brothers who don't understand anything I know majority of you alhamdulillah have been for umrah so you'll understand umrah doesn't change it's exactly the same if anybody's going for the first time and you don't understand anything to do with umrah feel free to come and ask us later on or towards the end of the program we'll go through that inshallah so umrah part of your trip has now been done Inshallah, we'll now move on to the Hajj, which is going to be applicable to everybody, including ourselves, Inshallah. So, anything you don't understand about Umrah, do let us know. And from here on, it's going to be very, very focused towards the five days of Hajj. Remember, make your niyat as to which Hajj you want to be doing. You make that niyat at the start because it will dictate how your suffer will go from there on. There will be people who will say something different to what you thought was right and to what you have in your heart stick to what you've decided stick to what your plans are stick to your mashwira amongst your families and stick to your root your root will dictate your um hajj as well because those brothers who are going to be coming to makkah so straight from bolton blackburn preston straight to makkah those brothers predominantly will be that's if you're going just a few days before hajj predominantly will be tamattu okay umrah come out of ihram go back to ihram for hajj that's tamattu those brothers who will be going straight to makkah where there's only one maybe a day or two days left maybe not two days it'll probably be the last day before hajj it might be better for you to do kiran because you'll be doing your umrah and you'll be doing your uh, tawafi kudum and sa'i as well 
So then you stay in the ihram, no cutting of your hair, and you will then go straight to Hajj. You might fall in that situation. It might not make much sense at the moment, but when you get there on the way, when you arrive, you'll understand, okay, I've not got this much time now. What do I do? So at that, that point, you decide, okay, this is the niyat I need to do. And then lastly, ifrad, we're not going to really touch on. Inshallah, there won't be many who will fall into uh, the situation where they will have to do ifrad. But if you find that you're not able to do either tamatu or kiran, then obviously ifrad is the one that you'll fall into, inshallah. So I hope that paints a little bit more of an understanding. But if you still don't understand that part, do let us know. Umrah is Umrah. Hajj alhamdulillah is very, very easy because you need to be in one place at that time and you'll be doing certain things. So everybody will be doing the same. So to understand Hajj will be very easy, inshallah. And Maulana will go through that. Umrah and the niyat for Hajj is the little bit of a tricky point. So if you don't understand, please feel free to fire away as ask us and we'll go through it, inshallah, again. Okay, Jazakumullah. Send yours on the WhatsApp as well. Yeah. So Inshallah, we're going to give you this list. Uh, we have to respect this list because it's a very old list and it's Fuzzle Mama's list, which we generally just laugh at because it's embarrassing. But we have the most up to date list now with the power banks and the um, air tags and things like that. So, Inshallah, we'll pass these lists around. And because everybody is now in the Falah group, we will post the digital copy of the list we've put together, in which case it'll tell you everything that you need to pack in your suitcases, everything, you pretty much know what you need to take, but if there's things that you've overlooked or you forget, it's a checklist that'll cover everything, inshallah. The most important things for me, I always say this, nowadays is an extension lead. If you have an extension lead in Mina, trust me, you will be king. Everybody will come to you with food, water, everything, because... Power is very, very important in Mina, and you will need it. So extension is very important. Power banks are the most important thing. Vaseline, and for me, for if you guys are going to be doing a walking hudge, a pedal hudge, then um, electrolytes or energy tablets are very, very important. Salt tablets are very, very important. It'll keep you hydrated. The heat is extreme. Any of you who are not used to the heat or any of you who generally don't walk around when it's very, very hot, it is extremely hot, especially in um, Mina and Arafat because it's out in the open. It can reach up to 45 degrees, so the heat will catch you. Hydration is very, very important. Inshallah, we'll talk about all the um, all these little bits and bats, little tips later on, inshallah. But power bank, very important. Extension lead, very, very important. Vaseline, very, very important. Energy tablets, along with electrolytes or salt tablets, are very, very important, inshallah. Zakumullah. Yeah, inshallah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to post a digital copy. I'll post the digital copy, inshallah. So, Umrah has been completed. Umrah mukammal ho gaya. Tawaf hamne kal tawaf ke upar baat ho gayi. Tawaf se farig hone ke baad, tawaf ke liye wuzub bhoat zaruri hai. Tawaf se farig hone ke baad, phir safa marwa ki sa'i. Ab likha hua hai, mas'a sa'i ki jige. So it's all signposted. Mas'a, the direction towards the place of Sa'i. Safa Marwa, Safa Marwa ke darmiyan, Sa'i ki jati hai. Or Sa'i mein bhi milen akhzarein do pahari pehle the. Ab to pahar nahi, ab to bilkul maabal ke saath usko hambar kar diya gaya hai. To wo green light hogi or jab milen akhzarein jis hisse mein dorna hai, to wo niche maabal thoda green hoga. ये इसकी निशानी है और वैसे भी हम महसूस कर लेंगे कि लोगों ने दौड़ना शुरू कर दिया है तो उनके साथ साथ तुम भी बीवी से भाग जाओ फिर वहां पहुंच कर के जरा इंतजार कर लेना तो सफा से मरवा मरवा से वापस सफा और दोनों पहाड़ी पर जब पहुंचो किबले की तरफ मुंह रुक करके तकबीर पढ़ करके दुआ करनी है सफा मरवा में सही के लिए वुजू जरूरी नहीं है वुजू हो तो अच्छा है जिक्र फिक्र में लगे रहो और दुआएं कबूल होती है तस्बीह पढ़ो दुरूद शरीफ पढ़ो इस्तिगफार पढ़ो और दुआ करते रहो और जब सफा मरवा की सही मुकम्मल हो गई तो फिर उसके बाद बाल इंशाल्लाह हलक करने हैं अगर किसी को कोई उज़र वगैरह हो तो वो काट भी सकते हैं और अहराम में से हम निकल जाएंगे अब कुछ लोग मदीना जाएंगे मदीने से वापस आएंगे तो अगर आप सीधे हज में जा रहे हो तो वहां से हज का भी अहराम पहन सकते हो और अगर मक्के वापस आ, आने वाले हो दो दिन दो दिन तीन दिन रहने वाले हो तो फिर और एक और उम्र कर लो 
मक्के में आप रहेंगे कुछ हजरात वो मदीने जाएंगे मदीने से सीधे हज में जाएंगे कुछ हजरात वो हज के एक दिन पहले मक्का पहुंचेंगे खैर सातवीं जिल हिज्जा को आम वतन वहां पर खुतबा वगैरह होता है जो सुन्नत है लेकिन आप लोगों के लिए तो सातवीं से तकरीबन कार्रवाई और तैयारी शुरू हो जाएगी अब आज हम हज के पांच दिनों में से एक दो दिन के ऊपर रोशनी डालेंगे इन शह सो इस्लामिकली हज इज ऑन द एथ नाइन टेन इलेवन ट्वेल्थ ऑफ दिल हिज एंड यू विल नो eight days in advance when is the day of arafa and when is the day of eid eid is on the 10th 10th the day before 9th is the most important day al hajj arafa where you will go to arafa and then 8th is the day that you will go to mina maybe your group systems or whatever package you are with they might tell you i don't know maybe so he knows better they might give you a time that when you go into mina etc Um, generally for going to mina um they have um a um um a lotting system so basically the um the, the call used to call them wallings but the service providers will have allocations at certain times through the night generally uh on the sunnah to maghrib the so the the, the zilhaj turns to the 8th of zilhaj which is maghrib yeah on the 7th basically at that point everybody will start to make the preparations to come into the ihram for hajj and so you will be given times now those times are very approximate so they might say at 10 o'clock your coach will be coming so you need to be ready but that 10 o'clock could easily be um Allah will agree with me because all about that could be 2 3 o'clock in the morning so that night will be one you'll be you know anxious about going to mina trying to wait for the coach get all the family together so you just You'll be just in a state of what's going to happen, what's going to happen. But the coach will arrive at its time. You just need to be ready. What I would say: don't just sit up and panic. Just have some rest. And one person in the family or amongst you who feels they just want to stay up, then they can stay up, and the rest just rest. As soon as the coach arrives, they'll wake everybody up. You just load your stuff, stay on to the coach. Because as soon as you get to Mina, you'll be going to sleep anyway. Because you'll be there either four o'clock, three o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock. Those are really much. Generally. the uk group don't get there um any late than fajr before that inshallah you will be there the earliest that we've seen could be around uh, 11 12 o'clock but don't quote the 11 12 o'clock that can change to uh, something like 2 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning this is every single year we saw this last year and we've seen that pre covid as well so wait for now before this we used to have the agent we used to have the agent who used to say okay this time but the agents are not there We've got guides now, so they'll be led by the service providers like Duval Bay, Al Raji, people like them. So they will have to be informed by them to then inform you. So just be very patient, is what I would say. So, yeah, that's a little bit different. So somebody who is taking part in Bedul Hajj, the priority here is your group. The priority here is your service provider. If you choose to go on Padal Hajj, then Inshallah, in the Fala group will guide you, will tell you where we meet and how we go about it. For example, if your coach says to you or your guide says to you that we will be leaving Mina at two o'clock in the morning, then the group will go at two o'clock in the morning. Then it's your responsibility to make yourself uh, available or make yourself presentable at Haram. So we normally meet outside King Abdul Aziz Gate. Opposite King Abdul Aziz, opposite the bridge, there's um, the bathroom. We call it the number three. We meet there, so we pray Fajr, and after Fajr, we come outside. Those who want to uh, remember, if you come outside King Abdul Aziz gate, you'll have your luggage with you. You'll have your no, luggage in your rucksack, so you will not be able to go inside the Haram. So we stay outside. We keep our luggage there. We pray after uh, Fajr, and whoever wants to just um, after sunrise, obviously, we must be Ishraq. We wait Ishraq. We try not to stay too long to Ishraq now; it gets hot very easily. So as soon as sunrise hits, we do the sunnah and we make our way towards Mina. So those guys who are going to be in Raji packages, you're generally going to be in Azizia. So you've got to make sure that for Fajr you get a taxi and get to Haram. Okay? Those who are going to be non-shifting are going to be in Makkah anyway. You will stay in Makkah. You'll go for Fajr and meet us outside. 
Haram, King of Aziz Gate. We'll all be there. Inshallah, we'll have a flag as well. Um, so we'll meet you there, inshallah, wait for all the other brothers or whoever's going to be walking with us, join us, and then we'll leave at the same time. So those who are doing pedal hajj with us, inshallah, we will meet outside. But those instructions we will give later on because that's not priority at the moment. The priority is your five days of hajj and how generally the groups work, inshallah. Does that answer your question? At the moment, so basically, what you have to understand is that there are maybe two million people doing Hajj, and then there's the authority and the management on top. At the moment, we make all the intention, and abhi se ham niyat kar lekin inshallah ham sunnat ke mutabik Hajj karenge. And sunnat is to leave after Fajr. Sunnat is to pray Fajr in Haram and then to leave. Yeah. But to cooperate with the management, cooperate with the system, personally, I think it's more than Sunnah, it's necessary. Because to move and shift and arrange and manage and coordinate two million people, a little glitch here and there can be very fatal and cause casualties. And protection from such incidents is for us and wajib, yes? So in a sense, we're obliged Islamically as well. Mufti Sahib uh, is here, so he will correct me. And it's my personal opinion. I think it's very important. And it's a bit more than sunnah. It's, it's necessary that we follow the instructions given by the, the system, the mutawif or the raji or the service providers, etc. Because they have a bigger picture. And they know what can go wrong in order to avoid accidents, incidents, casualties, etc. They make these decisions. And they might ask you, leave before Fajr and go and pray Fajr in Mina. And then you might have somebody in the group who say, I've just read in the Kitab that you pray Fajr in Makkah and then you go. So no, I'm not going to go until after Fajr. And then that Hajisab will be left behind and then he'll be lost. He might make his way to Mina, but all throughout Mina, he'll be looking for his tent. And the tent city is a maze, very difficult to find your tent. And then he'll get so knackered and shattered and exhausted that he won't be able to do his ibadah. Yeah. Now, there is extra reward for walking, but what's important is you consider the people with you as well. One mistake I made when I went maybe the last time with the family, so uh, we had a young kid and uh, and the family and then I, I and I was going with the family so I said we're going to take it easy you know this is going to be a luxurious uh, hajj no pedal and no jumping the fences and walking through the deserts and shortcuts this is just going to be on the coach go and come back but then last minute somebody said yeah, shall we walk it one family member yeah let's walk it and then the kids and the family yeah let's walk it and I got a bit excited and we started walking. And then in the beginning is the tunnels and the kid was, he's not a kid anymore. The, uh, my young, young one was running. Yeah. And we have to actually tell him stop, stop and pull him back with the, the chest belt and uh, et cetera. But that was after Fajr. It's not hot yet. We're going through the tunnel and people are labayk, Allahumma labayk, and the atmosphere is building up. Once the tunnels finish and you start walking in open air, then you realize what a pedal hajj is. We got tired, and by the time we got to Mina, exhausted, and then the little one, he overexcited, overpowered himself, and now he fell flat. And he wasn't well in Arafat, and then we had to look after him, and, and it affected everybody's hajj. So sometimes you can get overexcited. Sometimes, you know, you, you get carried away with the environment and the atmosphere, etc. Just be a bit considerate. Yeah, even somebody like me who's been so many times, Alhamdulillah, and had the intention not to do pedal hajj, then you just got caught into it. So yes, what I'm, the point I am making is, you might read in the kitab that uh, you go for, uh, it is, you have to leave Mina on the last day, we will come to it before Maghrib and then your Muallim will say, no, we'll go later on. There's all flexibility. Especially if we go into Mina, yes, we've already made the niyat that we want to do everything according to Sunnah, 
but it is also very necessary, very important, and a bit more than sunnah to listen to the authorities. So if the authorities say, your coach is coming at 10, then you go at 10. Yes, and unfortunately, sometimes we have many muftis that we realize when we want to ask a masla, there's nobody there. But when, when people want to come out with the maslas, there's so many muftis there coming out with maslas. Yes, and people will say, You just follow the instruction. People up there who make these decisions, they know what the maslas are, etc. Tiki, is that clear? On the 7th, you will be told when to go, get ready. Have a ghusl if you're already in Mecca, put on your ihram, go to Masjid uh, Haram, pray to rakats, etc. Uh, and, and if you're in Aziziyah, you don't necessarily have to come to a haram to put on your ihram. Take your muftis up, brother. Yeah, it's not necessary. Make an attempt. Try to come if you can. But don't forget on the last day, the taxes will be charging more than triple. Yeah, and they will drop you off very far away. And you'll have to walk quite a bit. Yeah? And it just gets mad around Mecca. The, the roads are jam, jammed, etc. So, yeah? you put on your ihram in your hotel, in Azizia, in Mecca. Go to Haram. If you can from Azizia, go. And ihram ki dorakat pare, dua kalle, and enjoy the moments. So remember us in your duas as well, inshallah. Now we come into the days of Hajj. Inshallah, when you reach Mina, at night time if you reach Mina, it will be empty. Yeah? And you might just go to sleep in an empty tent after Fajr and wake up for Zahar and you turn around and there's somebody here. You turn around, there's somebody here. You stand up and there's somebody near your legs. Don't get frightened. That's normal. Yeah? So if you get there, especially before Fajr, uh, near our tents, there's Masjid Kuwaiti. You can normally uh, hear the Adhan. Uh, in your own tents, you give your Adhan, you pray Fajr. In Mina, it's Sunnah to pray five Salats, five Salawat, Zahar, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, and Fajr. You might pray six, which is okay. You pray Fajr of the eighth, as well as the Fajr of the ninth. Because you'll most probably get there before Fajr. And the reason why they do that, because after Fajr, it just gets too busy. The advantage is you'll get there, nobody's there. You might even have two beds and two beddings. Make the most of it until other people start coming. Yeah? Any water coolers, etc., bring them in your tent. Don't hide them. Leave them for everybody. Yeah? Uh, and make sure your bedding is near the, 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 the charger. So if you've not got your extension, you can just plug it in. The tents are, mashallah, very good. Yeah. I normally say this, that when we went for the Fajr, first Hajj maybe years ago, yeah, we, we went past and we were students, so we used to wander around here and there. Uh, we didn't have a tent, we didn't pay for anything, so we just go wherever we can just camp out. And sometimes we went past these tents and we thought, wow, look at these tents. Oh, tents with air conditions. Wow, even in our hotel, we don't have air conditions. Yeah, we thought that must be the royal family. That must be really rich people uh, and must be guests of the royal family. The tents you have now are even better than those tents. The only difference is we don't appreciate it, we don't recognize it. Luxurious. Some of them have mattresses. Each and every one has air condition. Yeah, block paving. Better than Dean Road and Blackburn Road. Yeah. Just about matches Derby Street. Yeah. And between the tents, there's block paving. Yeah. And the facilities are very good, mashallah. In England, for those type of tents and camping, people pay hundreds of pounds. Hajis pay thousands of pounds. <laughs> but alhamdulillah, uh, you, you, there'll be in, in, in enough supply of water, yeah, food, etc. Most important thing you have to do in Mina is have a rest. Mina is a station where you go and mentally, physically prepare yourself to go to Arafah. You don't just straight away go to Arafah. You leave the hustle bustle of Kaaba, of Mecca, 
the city, and then you go into the plain field of Mina. Starting to abandon those connections that you have and the attractions. Mina me hab jab jayenge, to Mina to ek medan ka naam hai, thik hai? You have the view of Mina there. Mina to ek medan ka naam hai. Mina me jaane ka maksad ye hai ki wahan jaakar ki zehni taur par ham haj me jaane ke liye tayar ho jaave. Mina Makkah ka darwaza hai, bahut mukaddas jagye hai, ambiya wahan se guzre hai. Abraha ki lashkar ko yaha par Makkah me daakil hoonay se mana kar diya gaya tha, to Mina hi ke andar isko halak kar diya gaya. اس علاقے میں ہم جا نہیں سکتے ہیں ممنوع ہیں شرعی طور پر بھی تو جو لوگ پہلے گئے نہیں ہیں اگر پیدل حج میں جانا ہو تو سوہل وغیرہ کے ساتھ مجھے صاحب کے ساتھ جائے اکیلے نہ جائے منہ میں پہنچ کر کے ہماری انڈیا اور منگلہ دیش اور پاکستان کے مہمان اور رشتہ داروں کو دھنے کے لئے نہ جائے اب تو واتس اپ کا زمانہ ہے فون کر لو اگر آپ دھننے کے لئے جائیں گے شاید جاتے وقت آپ کو مل بھی جائے گی ان کی ٹینٹ وغیرہ لیکن آتے وقت اگر آپ گم ہو گئے تو دو تین گھنٹے نکل جائیں گے اپنی تمبو کو دھننے دھننے تو اس ویری کمپلیکیٹیڈ کیپ تو یسیف the main aim of Mina is you go there you do zikr you do fikr and you have a good rest اب احرام کے اندر ہے آپ حج میں ہے ہر ہر گری قیمتی ہے جتنا ہو سکے لبے ایک پر ہے زہور کے لئے اٹھے کھانا وغیرہ بھی انشاءاللہ مہیا ہوگا پھر زہور کے بعد بھی تھوڑی دیر آرام کر لے آسر سے مغرب ذکر وغیرہ میں مشکول ہو جائے بیانات بھی ہوتے ہیں تو اس میں لگ جائے انشاءاللہ if you go in with the family after مغرب go outside sit outside sit and, uh, and chill, chill meaning not gossip, but just enjoy the atmosphere, keep on doing zikr, keep on doing tasbih, keep on doing labbaik, have time with the family, because the tents will be segregated, men in one, women in one, but obviously you want to be with your family as well, so you can arrange a time that after asr, go out together, or after maghrib, go out and sit together and enjoy the atmosphere. There are shopping areas, etc. If there's something necessary to, uh, to buy, then go. If not, just focus on enjoying the atmosphere, ibadat, and having a rest. Go sleep after Fajr early. You can wake up for Tahajjud. When will you get the chance of Tahajjud in Mina, in Ihram, in Hajj, amongst millions of Hajjis? Yes? When you're in Mina, in each and every tent and area, there will be Salat. Yes? Zahar, Asar, Adhan, Iqama, and everybody will be doing in their own tents, Jamaat, inshallah. Inshallah, everything Mawlana has said, Alhamdulillah, it's very pertinent. It's still the same. The only really thing that's changed now, um, which will apply to the Hujaj from the UK, is the fact that there's now two camps. 90% of you this year, from what we've seen, will be in Camp C, which is known as Muasim which is the slaughterhouse camps, which is the traditional European camp, which is right at the far end of uh, Mina, which is closest to Muzdalifah. Those of you who are in the Albait camps, Albait group, um, do you have Albait group, um, especially those in Dom and Hidayah, majority of you will be in Camp A, which is, um, they call it the VIP camp. The only reason they call it VIP is because of its location. Don't expect um, way to service. Um, that's not VIP. VIP is a location because the Arab camps are all there and they're known as VIP because they're buildings for royalty, diplomats and dignitaries. So the VIP camp is there. The other good VIP thing about it is the fact that you're a stone's throw from the Jamrat, literally a 10 minute walk. Whereas the guys um, judge who are around Waisim, you've got uh, an hour's walk, an hour and a half walk. So there's two camps. You might have some of your family members in Camp A. You might have some of your families in Camp C. If you need to go and see them, if one of the guides are there or somebody who knows the routes, only ask them. Do not venture out. Like Mona said, you will get lost. I have got audio clips on my WhatsApp still there from families who'd lost children, 17-year-olds, 18-year-olds who went who ventured out. And they won't know when heat stroke hits you in that heat, 
you just want, you'll just be disorientated. You just won't feel comfortable. You'll be agitated and you'll just collapse. We, we saw this. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't want to frighten anybody. Inshallah, everybody will be fine. But if you do suddenly start to venture out, look for somebody, go somewhere, take mashwira, speak to somebody, take somebody with you because it is a minefield and it is a maze. Everything, every street you'll turn, it look identical. And you'll think, oh, I've seen that, but it'll be something totally different. So be mindful of this, inshallah. Those are the two camps. As Maulana said, you've been so nervous, so anxious, so much been going on, so much about Hajj. Now you're into Hajj. Now you're into Mina. That's where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will calm you down. That's where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, okay, now you're here. Rest, relax, be at ease, because tomorrow you're going to be doing Hajj. And I don't want to take, um, you know, the spirit away from Maulana. The way he explains Hajj is, it still puts my hair on end. I still get the chills, because my first Hajj, was with Molana and my first Hajj education came from Molana and I know what it's like and he prepared me at that time so inshallah he'll prepare you for Arafat tomorrow but for now you're in um, you're in Mina make the most of Mina enjoy entire ibadat if there's any bayans programs talim going on take part alhamdulillah when our jamaat was there last year we took we did talim mufti sab was there maslama sales anybody needed any help with anything anybody needs charging what do we do tomorrow Everything like that. Just think you're in you're in Jama'at for a day or you're, you're in the path of Allah for one day. Pray your namaz with Jama'at. Do your ibadat. Pray, you know, extra nafil as well. At Maghrib time, pray your um, awabin. Um, you know, tahajjud. All your, you know, nafil salah and everything. Like Every little bit of ibadat you could do, just do it in Mina and you will be charging up, really charging up for the very next day because that really is hajj. Inshallah, I hope, um, hope Allah makes it easy for all of you. Be slow down now with the extra mass. <laughs> Walk faster. You know the routes and the roads and the shortcuts now. You might, if you look at the photo, let me get this right. If you look, it says Mina starts here and there's a circle. So, you know, so is this out of Mina or is this the starting of Mina? So, if Mina starts here, are these tents outside Mina? No. All this is Mina. So basically, Mina is an area between the mountains. Yes? And over here, over here is a mountain. Yeah? And then if you come down from the mountain and you walk a bit, you walk a bit, then you come to this sign where it says Mina starts here. And these signs were put up many, many years ago when there wasn't so many hajis. So, at the foot of the mountain, a bit inside Mina, they put these signs up. And nobody would come to the, that area, uh, and it was well away from the, uh, uh, the hajis where they resided and where they camped. Yeah? But now, the amount of hajis has increased up to the extent that they write to the foot of the mountain. So these signs might appear inside, but you're still in Mina. Yeah? And you can't be out of Mina because it's surrounded with mountains. And as soon as Mina finishes, Muzdalifah starts, and you can notice it. So if some of these signs are there, and you're on the other side of the sign, don't worry, you are still in Mina, inshallah. Coming back to the, days, the day of Mina, what date is it Islamically? The day of Mina is what date? Eight. Yeah. When you're in Mina, have a good rest. Take it easy. Start preparing yourself for the most important day, which is the day of Arafah, the day before Eid, the day known as Yawm Arafah, 9th of Dhul Hijjah. Once again, you will pray Fajr in Mina, and then you will be making your way towards Arafah after Fajr. You will pray Fajr, then your uh, service providers will let you know once again, they might, between them, they'll have uh, a lot in system, and they'll take out whoever's name comes out first. They will be, their, their coaches will go first. But once again, after Fajr, you don't all have to stay awake. You can have a rest. You can relax. And you can enjoy. It is preferable, advisable that after Fajr, on that day, you control your diet a bit. Start controlling your diet. 
And remember, the facilities in Mina are better than the next station, Arafah. The facilities in Arafah are better than Muzdalifa. So before you leave, yep, whatever your basic necessities are in terms of the lavatory, etc., get that done in Mina. Because the facilities in Mina are better than Arafah. After Fajr, you will might be given an approximate time, so don't worry. And sometimes it gets late, sometimes it, you know, Fajr finishes at 5, half 5, and sometimes 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. You might feel, whoa, it's empty, nobody's coming. They will come. Coaches will come. And at the end, they'll be shouting and they'll make sure that everybody has left their tents. If you, if you get there earlier, you're lucky in the sense that you can have a rest and you don't have to panic. And uh, you, you'll, maybe, maybe you'll get a spacious area, not for long, and you can go to sleep. But there's no need to jump the queues or push anybody or try to get onto the coach. Just stay with your family, with your group. Whatever time is allocated to you, inshallah, you will leave and you will get to Arafah. The ninth of the Hijjah is one of the most important days. And inshallah, we will talk about the ninth of Arafah tomorrow, inshallah. Atwith al Hijjah ko hum mina ke andar honge, is din aram karna hai. Paas namaze panni hai. Agar ho sake to tahajjud ke liye uthe jave. Waha tents jo honge, mard hazrat ek tent mein, aur te ek dusri tent ke andar hogi. Aur wuzu khana wagera waha intizam bhi achcha hai, paani bhi बहुत मिलता है और इस्तिंजा की इस्तिंजा वगैरह से फारिग होने की कोशिश करें फजर के बाद ताकि इससे कि ये मीना के अंदर जो इंतजामात है वो आरफा से ज्यादा बेहतर है। You will be going for approximately one day and one night, the day of Arafah and the night of Muzdalifah, then most probably coming back to Mina. Okay. Now, when you arrive in Mina, you might have a lot of luggage and a lot of chevra. It's not necessary to take it all with you. Yeah, Gujarat is the day to take the che chevras. If it's not samosa, it's chevra and sakarpura. Yeah. Yeah. So you're only going basically, basically for approximately 24 hours. You might not need to take everything with you. You can leave certain things behind. So you will be spending one day in Mina, daytime Arafah, night in Muzdalifa, and then coming back to Mina, staying in Mina two or three days. Yeah. So you plan accordingly. When you pack, you can pack accordingly. Yeah. Normally things are safe in Mina. But obviously you don't leave money behind, valuables behind, phone, power pack, etc. And Vaseline, yeah, take it with you. Make sure you know which your tent is, which area it is, and uh, normally, normally, uh, it's all signposted. So, can you see these pillars? Yellow and blue. Yellow and blue. I think that's Indonesian, maybe. Yeah, ours is red and white. And then each and every pillar will have a number. And it's normally, if, if it's the first time, you, you still won't be able to find it. Yeah? Do we have some more photos? Yeah? So every area uh, will have pillars, entrances, etc. This seems like a uh, Bangladesh or Indian area. Can you see these are the mountains? Mina is in between these mountains. Carry on. Any more photos? Yeah. So, yeah, these are the mountains that I'm explaining. Yeah, carry on. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Any any questions regarding Mina? Um, what I said regarding Mina and packing, um, obviously those who are doing walking pedal hajj, then you'll know you'll be carrying just rucksacks. Now, those who are who need their um, belongings as in necessities might be medication. Some people might need extra, um, you know, extra pairs of clothes. 
you'll all want to carry an extra ihram. When I say carry an extra ihram, just the bottom part, in case your ihram gets soiled or for whatever reason you require to change it, um, you'll need to carry a spare uh, ihram. I always recommend that anyway. But take only what you need and travel as light as possible. Those who are going to be on the coach who wish to carry some of their belongings, if some of your belongings with them, then you can pass them on, but don't impose yourself on anybody. Don't be a burden on anybody. Just look after yourselves, carry what you can, and rest, just leave it. A lot of people say, oh, can I take a, um, a you know, um, a hand luggage with me? I wouldn't advise it. I, I, I posted a little story in, the, um, in our WhatsApp group. There was a family um, who sent their son, 17-year-old, walking with us from Arafat to um, Muzdalifa. That's a seven-mile walk at night on the motorway. And they said, oh, take this wheelchair with you. And in that wheelchair, there were seven, seven gadlas and sleeping bags. So they, required, they requested us to push that wheelchair all the way to Muzdalifa for them. But they went on the coach. So, you know, that... <laughs> I just said, we can't possibly do that. It's dangerous. We'll have to leave it. So we left it behind. So the point I'm trying to make is don't burden anybody. Carry what you need. The bare essentials, food and everything will be provided in those places anyway. Only the stuff that you need, the lighter you carry, the easier it'll be for you. People ask, oh, do I need a sleeping bag? There'll be mats over there. It's too hot. You don't need a sleeping bag. Just get a camping mat. It's more than adequate. It's on that list we posted as well. So carry as, um, as minimal as you need, uh, the bare essentials. And inshallah, it'll make your travel very, very easy. And Molana said before, the diet, very, very important. You will absolutely remember us if you need to go to the loo and you find that the toilet's got a queue of about 20, 30 people. We have seen people fight to jump into the toilet. And yeah, so very, very important. Mina, eat as much as you want before you leave. Relieve yourselves and then just go on to fluids and light foods, inshallah. Hope that helps. Jazakumullah. Okay. Easy ones you can ask me, difficult ones leave up for Okay. So, are we all clear with regards to uh, any questions? So, Mina ke under jab hum pahunchenge to khane pine ka bhi zara ab kam kar le, ehtiyat kare aur Mina me waha istinje ki jage aur तो मीना के अंदर इसिंजा वगैरह की फैसिलिटीज ज्यादा बेहतर है फजर के बाद मीना से रवाना होने से पहले पहले फारिग हो जावे अरफात के अंदर भी है लेकिन मीना में जितनी अच्छी फैसिलिटीज है इतनी अरफा में नहीं है और इसी तरह जब अरफात से जब तुम मुजलिफा जाओगे तो अरफात से फारिग होकर के मुजलिफा जाना मुजलिफा में इससे भी कमतर फैसिलिटीज और अरेंजमेंट्स है अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह पानी वगैरह बहुत है आप जब मुजदलिफा से गुजरेंगे ना तो आप देखेंगे कि पालिस दर पालिस पानी के ढेर रखे हुए हैं हाजियों के लिए और वो कंकरिया भी आप देखेंगे वो मशीन के साथ वो कंकरिया आपके लिए इकट्ठे कर रहे होंगे तो आप तो अभी तक तो अड़फा नहीं पहुंचे मुजदलिफा की तैयारी हो रही और जैसे तुम मीना से रवाना हो जाएंगे साफ सफाई वगैरह आपके आम वापसी के लिए इस्तेबाल के लिए सब साफ सफाई वगैरह सब कुछ तैयार हो जाएगा अल्लाह कबूल करे आल बी ही आफ्टर नमाज फॉर फाइव मिनट्स फजल बाय वो बी हियर सुहेल विल बी हियर मुफ्ती साहब विल बी मे बी आई डोंट नो मुफ्ती साहब यू हियर डज एनी बडी नीड टू टॉक टू मुफ्ती साहब आफ्टर नमाज एनी बडी नीड टू टॉक टू मी You've had enough of me, I understand. Chalo. Chalo, Maghrib ke baad, Sohail. Anybody wants to talk to Sohail? Chalo, Maghrib ke baad, chutti. Sab ki. Jazakallah, lads, volunteers. Pani le jao, bhai. Khajur khate jao. Khajur khao, pani piyo.